Good afternoon. It's the 10th of October. Um, it's just before five o'clock in the evening and it's gonna, it'll get noisy out there with people coming home from work. Um, well, it's been, yeah, I can't remember, a couple of days at least since I, I put a vlog up. Um, I've been slow tired in limbo now mark talked about being feeling like he was in limbo um he's the one that's waiting for something well i am too but he's the one that's in waiting and he's got another 20 day, 20 20 days to go um but i just feel like it i've been in limbo for the last couple of days i think partly to do the weather the weather's been so hot and um in the morning it's really cold so you dress accordingly um and i don't bring extra clothing i don't I, I dress accordingly but i don't have extra clothing on so i sit there and then by the afternoon i'm too hot and and that's sort of tiring isn't it being too hot it's really warm again now i don't know what the temperature is i've come out the back i've opened up the gate to let chickens and sheep in but nobody's come in yet oh here they come You've heard me talking. Oh, sorry, I kicked that. I can see a robin as well. There's a the robin's around a lot now, so they're coming round. Um, thank you, Marie B, for your comments. Very kind comments. Um, and yes, we worked at making sure, as far as possible, that we weren't institutionalising our residents. That's really difficult when you're twenty eight residents have all throughout their lives been institutionalized very difficult to make changes to that sorry about the cockerels they're coming home from work as well um they the one example i can give you of us attempting to make sure we weren't institutionalizing our residents was in the afternoons when afternoon tea was being god they're loud aren't they god this i think we had this the other day i don't want to go out the front though i'm going to just do that a bit i don't want to go out the front i'm too it's too hot out there um in the afternoons at afternoon tea time their tea would be bought out in big teapots um, with the milk and tea bags and i'm not sure about sugar i can't remember now all in the pot all ready to just Oh, please, all ready to just pour um, and drink. So I remember us having a meeting. We had a community meeting each Friday lunchtime. And I remember at one of the meetings we talked about, do you, how would you like it to be served, you know, properly with... <laughs> oh. With... with a pot of tea, a pot of milk and the sugar on the table and, and, and served properly. And they all voted no. The majority voted no. They wanted it as they'd always had it. So there were other things that we did. We, we had training sessions. I put on training sessions about institutionalisation, um, which were really important. So as far as we were able, we tried not to do I think the thing about inst institutionalisation is is that you treat people how you think they want to be treated based on your needs. I think that's my best way of describing it. So, for instance, you walk into a room to help someone get up in the morning and you walk in and you throw the window open. Go, oh, it's really hot in here. Throw the window open. Not asking them how, you know, are you warm enough? Would you like the window open? Do you want some air in? You're assuming based on your body heat which bearing in mind you've been getting people up and getting them dressed, so you're going to be quite warm, is going to be different to the person that's just getting out of bed and has been still all night. Um, so thing, little things like that, you know, and lots of things. I can't remember now. We're going back 18 years. So, yeah, we, we did make sure, as far as we were able, that we offered people choices, and I think that was another thing that's really important, is offering choices. So... Um, Thank you, Maria B. I hope, Marie B, and I hope that you find, if that need comes up for you and your disabled son, that you find somewhere 
that is um, open and willing to give choices. And if you're able to get yourself trained up now so that you can look for things that might need to change, that you can introduce in a way that isn't going to upset everybody, that's possible. You know, it's possible that you can take along a list of things that you'd like to be done or like differently and, and make sure that your son's needs are met based on his choices rather than the choices of the people doing it at you because that's what happens is people do stuff at you in an institution and um yeah so I, I wish you well with that i hope it doesn't come to that but we never know do we when what, what's around the corner um whilst thinking about my place of work 18 years ago now i also remember um that um, I think some of my shock about things that I discovered there and things that happened there were based on, and this is based, based on my own loyalty and honesty and morals and was shocked to discover that, I know it shouldn't be, but I am sometimes shocked when somebody doesn't have the same level of loyalty as me or the same level of morals as me or, the, you know, it, it always shocks me. I always think that people, um, so I always judge people by my by my level. That's probably not the right word, but I'm not finding right words at the moment over the last few days. I always judge people at my level. And I think over the past few months or year maybe when I've been doing these YouTube videos, there have been people that have made assumptions about how I'm saying stuff or what I'm saying about something or someone. Um, and they're judging me on their levels and that's probably why they get pissed off with me but yeah i'm always shocked when people do things uh, that i think oh god how can you how can you be like that how can you do that that's just not fair that's just that's just so wrong makes me sound like a bloody saint doesn't it so um I've come into a realisation, potentially, that I'm going to have to slow down on the sourdough. I have stopped for two days making it because I did make a lot and I put a lot in the freezer. Um, but I've realised that for weeks now, I've been limping on my... This side, that's right, you know. On my right foot, I've been limping. And I because I've got rheumatoid arthritis in my hands, I sort of make an assumption that partly it's that in my feet. Um, but my hands have been hurting a bit more over the last couple of weeks and I've been coming to the conclusion that quite possibly it's the wheat in the sourdough. Even though I try and use decent um, flour, I've, I've had to start mixing in um, more, um, uh, more normal wheat because the spelt just wasn't really raising very well or wasn't making a good sourdough. Um, and I'm just wondering whether it's that. I know Viv would say to me it is that because um, obviously you know wheat is responsible for um, inflammation and I'm thinking oh maybe it's that which is a real bummer a real bummer especially when your last meal in the evening at six o'clock before your window closes is a bloody couple of slices of toast with marmite on I've really been enjoying it um, I don't want to go cold turkey I don't want to stop but at the same time the only way I'm going to be able to test it is to go to cold turkey and stop really irritating just as i'm really enjoying making it i had two days off because i was getting really tired and um what happens when i start making sourdough is that for the part of the process you're up and down every half an hour for a couple of hours folding and um folding and stretching the dough not yourself that would be even more exhausting wouldn't it if i was folding and stretching myself um so i'm, I'm up and down a lot when i'm doing that in between all the other stuff I'm doing, which isn't a lot, but I, you know, cooking meals. And yesterday I got to the point where I wanted to start. What was I going to do for supper? It might have been the day before. I was about to start the supper, which is sort of comes really, seems really close on the heels of our main meal at lunchtime. Um, I said to Mel, I feel like I'm just in this whole process of either i'm creating food or clearing up from food it's just becoming too much i got him to clear up because i just had enough I'd, yeah just had enough so today um 
to make up for that, we had we had scrambled eggs on toast as our main meal at lunchtime. And tonight we'll have in about what? God, in about three quarters of an hour, we'll have some more toast and I'll have more toast and more my um, and then that will be it until one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So we're managing quite well. I mean, I, I'm sometimes managed through to half twelve. We're managing that really well, that window, uh, the shortened window. I just find it rushed. And I think if I weren't enjoying the sourdough so much, I'd go to one meal a day. Because the meal that we had, was it yesterday, was, was quite filling because I did quite a big salad as our entree. And then I'd, I'd made Kentucky Fried Chicken with um, cornflakes and panko breadcrumbs and chicken thighs so it was actually quite a big meal and we could do one meal a day so we could just stop have that and then not bother of having a meal and not having that six o'clock um toast but there's a part of me that thinks oh god can i really manage that just one meal a day i'm sure i could if you'd have told me seven years ago that i would be going 19 18 or 19 hours without food I would have laughed at you. No way could I imagine that. But actually, it's so much better. So much better. Rarely, rarely do I get hangry. And I used to get hangry a lot if I had breakfast. I'd have breakfast and within two hours, whatever it was, whether it was porridge, toast, peanut butter on toast, I think, was my breakfast when I was working in Kent um, and probably in Devon. Uh, yeah, peanut butter on toast and... Uh, two hours later I was hungry again because it got my blood sugar yeah it rose my blood sugar and then you know got my metab metabolism going and then there's a dip isn't there is a mid-morning dip and, and that drops and then you're like well where's the next food so I love not feeling like that um I felt like it a couple of times uh two or three weeks ago which I didn't like because it's so rare now I just didn't like it We've been to the doctors this morning for um, renewing our prescriptions and just a general chit chat. And it reminded me also of um, how different things are here. Um, when we first came, we would go to the doctors and we would pay the doctor. And I think it might have been 23 euros back then, 17 years ago. And you'd pay for your visit, so you'd write a check, or yeah, I used to write a check. I, I didn't take cash, so you'd pay per person, so per patient, so it would be twenty three euros each. Oh, shield bug. Um, and then it went up to twenty five euros, and it, since I've had PMR, I haven't had to pay because I've got an in, a, an enduring illness, so I don't have to pay. He gets a direct refund from my health um, cover and Mark doesn't pay now so we go and see the doctor and neither of us pay and that's probably how it is in the UK isn't it we didn't used to pay the doctor it came out of your national insurance I think in the UK um, but yeah it, here it, it's it's quite odd not paying and I sort of offer our bank card each time or most times especially if it's been both of us because I don't understand why Mark's not why Mark is not paying, um, but I think he's pre-diabetic because he he you know he's sort of watching our HbA1c and um, I think it might be because he's pre-diabetic that he is not charging him. So we've both got blood tests to have um, later on. I've got I have a blood test every month anyway because of the drugs I take. Went to the pharmacy, picked up the drugs, went to the secretary at the at the blood station to the secretary at the nurse's station and she'd got covid so i was sort of like oh god you know so she'd got a mask on so i moved out of her office and stood on the threshold and passed her the forms she sorted them out and booked the appointments then stood over marks to write down the date for marks and coughed all over it with a mask on but i know that the the paper masks you know the the just the basic masks are not really very good so i came out to the car with those sprayed them with alcohol um and just cross fingers i really don't want to get bloody covid i don't want to i don't want mark to get covid i want him to be able to go in and have his bloody operation finally um and getting covid and having to postpone it would be a real bummer 
Um, so fingers crossed that I did what I needed to do and I'm keeping it at bay. We're having our COVID boosters next week because, again, I want to give him some protection um, so that he doesn't have to postpone the op. And um, we're coming up to... Yeah, uh, uh, COVID's on the rise again or has been on the rise. So there's people, I'm seeing people in masks again. And um, so, yeah, I, I just want to get us over this hump. I wouldn't want him to get it even afterwards, really, for a while, because, um, you know, he needs to heal his knee. Don't want him getting sick, but at the same time, getting over the hump of the knee before we move into uh, flu and COVID season. We've got forms that we received in the post a couple of weeks ago for the flu jab. I just need to pick that up after the 17th. Um, so that's it really, I think. Jo moves on Friday. She's worked really hard. She's got a good friend that's worked really hard with her um, to get the place ready. She's painted the bedroom. She's patched the walls. She's changed all the handles on her kitchen units. Um, lots of cleaning. Um, Vicky cleaned several times, took away rubbish seven, several times. Um, yeah, so she's, I think this is a tough week for her. Um, judging by the sort of the messages I'm getting are a bit more abrupt. So I'm just staying backed off and thinking, okay, okay. I won't get into that. Um, yeah, so that's where we're at. I was wondering, was wondering what's your favourite YouTube channel or what are your favourite YouTube channels and why? Um, I've been, I've been, I, I, I get a bit random and um, I watch stuff randomly. I've been watching um, Super Nanny just out of curiosity. God, she goes and sees some horrendous families. Kids completely out of control. This one I watched the other day. I mean, these are years old. They were 2005, so all these kids have grown up. Um, one I saw the earlier on of, of kids running around in the woods with machetes. Four-year-old with a machete. Really? It's like, God. That was interesting. And um, I also watch um, Don't Pay, We'll Take It Away, which is something we used to watch on um on the telly together years ago and watching that i just entertain myself really during the day because i can't do a lot and that's frustrating so i have to entertain myself um because uh, i can't do much and um it feels really lazy but it's that's the way it is anyway i'll give you a view of the babies um before i stop this And I went and um, bought, um, I bought Harry's bread today. I haven't had any for several days. And poor Ida, you can't see them because they've all gone under there for a dust bath. Poor Ida's not been getting her Harry's bread. And um, it's her ritual. And I think, I feel a bit bad that she's not had her ritual. So I bought some Harry's bread today. So she gets half a slice of that each evening as we go down to put the chickens away. Um, I don't know what she's eating. I think she's probably also eating rotten apples. Well, I'm pleased somebody is. Oh, those cockerels stopped, didn't they? God, that was trying, wasn't it, for a bit? Well, I hope you're having a nice day. It's, what do I say, it's Tuesday. And this warm, unseasonal weather is due to change, I think, on... Last I looked, there were storms due on Saturday. Um, but I could do with it cooling down. It's just not right for October. I thought there was a passion flower flowering. You know, the passion flower was in flower the other day, which is sort of, you know, mad for October. Um, 
they all seem very happy in there there's a couple of you can't see them i don't think under their dust bar thing i'm gonna move you nearer it's a better view i haven't picked them up and oiled them recently i might have to do that one day What are you eating, Ida? Ida, I'm just eating grass. Huh? It's cars that drive past with the pounding music, and I'm thinking, the young young people, and in twenty years' time, they'll be deaf. But you can't tell them. You can't tell them. Okay, time to go. Let's see how long this takes to upload. I'll start uploading it now at quarter past five.